So we are going to talk about an important theorem in vector calculus called the divergence theorem. It's going to use this definition of the divergence of a vector field. So if you're not familiar with this definition, I have a video on divergence that uses this formula, so you can check the link in the description for an explanation of that. To understand the divergence theorem, we're going to start by considering a surface integral in a vector field. So we take the integral of f dot n ds. We're also going to say that this is a closed surface. What that means is that the surface encloses a particular volume. For example, a sphere would be a closed surface because it encloses the volume of a ball. We're also going to choose the orientation of the normal vector to point outward. So we have our surface S that encloses a volume, which we'll call V. What we're going to do now is split this volume into two different parts. So say we split the volume so that there's one component over here and one over here. And what we're going to do is take the surface integral over each of these surfaces. So we're now looking at the surface integrals over two different surfaces that combine to enclose the entire volume V. Now we know that both of these surface integrals taken together will still go over the entire boundary of our volume. So they're still going to include the whole original surface S. But let's notice what happens in the middle of this volume. Because we chose the normal vector to always be oriented outward, on the left side with this red surface S1, the normal vector in the middle is going to point like this. On the other hand, with the surface on the right S2, the normal vector is going to point like this. The two normal vectors are going to point in the opposite direction. So when we take the surface integrals over this line that is the boundary that those two surfaces share, one of the integrals is going to give the negative of the other because their values are going to point in exactly the opposite direction. So these two surface integrals are going to cancel out in the middle because their normal vectors are pointing in exactly the opposite directions. That means that when we add these two surface integrals together, the middle is going to cancel out. We're just integrating over the original surface. So this sum is equal to the original sum of the surface integral. Now we can repeat this process as many times as we want. We can split up S1 even further into two regions and then more regions and more regions and more regions, getting smaller and smaller and smaller, because we know that every time we split up this surface into two surfaces sharing a boundary in the middle, the answer that we're going to get at the end is the same because the middle boundary will cancel out when the normals point in opposite directions. So we can continue doing this an arbitrary amount of times. And let's say we do that and we divide our volume into a bunch of very, very small volumes, each with a surface where we're taking the surface integral. In that case, we're going to have a summation over all of those different volumes of the surface integral over some surface of f dot n ds. So now we've split our original volume into a bunch of smaller volumes. And we know that every volume has a boundary, which is a surface. What we're doing from there is taking the surface integral over every single one of those boundary surfaces and adding them all up. Now I'm using three different sums here because we're looking at a volume, which is a three dimensional region. And this is starting to look a lot like a triple integral because we're adding up a value over a bunch of very, very small regions within a three dimensional range. Now in order to make this look more like a Riemann sum, we want to multiply that by the volume of every small region. So let's say we call the volume of those small regions dv. In that case, we want to multiply by dv to make this look like a Riemann sum, where we take the value of some function times the volume of that little region. But if we want to keep this as the same value that we started with, we also need to divide by dv so that it's equal to the original expression. So now we have something that looks a lot like a Riemann sum for a triple integral. We're taking a triple summation over some three-dimensional region 
of some value evaluated within that region times the volume. If we want to turn this into an actual triple integral, what we do is take the limit as the volume of each of those regions gets smaller and smaller and smaller towards zero. So let's think about what happens when we do that. We're going to have the triple integral over that entire original volume, which we called v. And on the inside here, what happens to this expression as we let dv approach zero? Well, this looks very familiar because it looks a lot like the expression for divergence that we have up here. 1 over the volume times a closed surface integral of f dot n ds. So if we take the limit as volume approaches zero, as this dv gets smaller and smaller as we divide up the regions more, this is going to turn into the divergence of our vector field evaluated at a point within that volume. Then we're going to multiply by dv. So this is the result of taking the limit of this expression as we make the volume smaller. But remember that every single step in this process preserved the original value of this surface integral. When we split it into two regions, it was still equal to the surface integral. If we split it into 4 or 8 or 16, it's still equal to the original surface integral. And even if we split it into an infinite number of regions, as we take the limit, it's still going to equal that original surface integral. So we know that this is still our original answer. The integral over some volume of the divergence of f with respect to that volume is equal to the integral over the boundary surface s of f dot n ds. And that is the divergence theorem. Also remember that this theorem is only true when the normal vector for this surface integral points outwards. That makes sense because the divergence talks about how much a vector field points outwards away from the original point. So when we take the integral over some volume, what's left is at the edges how much that vector field is pointed outward. We have to make sure that the normal vector accounts for that. So now we're going to look at an example of where the divergence theorem is very useful. We're going to evaluate the surface integral of f dot n ds, where f, the vector field, is z e to the y squared x plus 2y plus sine of z cubed, 1 minus z. And s is the surface defined by x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 1 for z greater than or equal to 0. And the circle x squared plus y squared equals 1 with z equal to 0. And we're going to take the normal vector to point outward. Our first step here is to think about our surface. We're looking at the surface first with this equation. And this is the equation of a sphere. We're looking at a constant distance of 1 away from the origin. But we're only looking at z greater than or equal to 0, which means that we're looking at the top half of a sphere, something like this. We're also looking at the circle x squared plus y squared equals 1, with z equal to 0. That's giving us the bottom of our hemisphere. So this bottom is going to be part of our surface, because that part with z equal to 0, that is the circle. So this is our closed surface. Now this vector field is not something that we want to deal with in a surface integral. But we can use the divergence theorem to try to simplify our calculation. Let's see what happens when we take the divergence of our vector field. What is the divergence of this function f? Well, we know that one formula for divergence is given by the del vector dotted with our vector field f. In this case, the del vector is talking about the vector of partial derivatives. So we have partial x, partial y, and partial z. And we put our vector field f right there, and we take the dot product. In this case, let's see what our divergence ends up being. First, we want the partial with respect to x of z times e to the y squared. Well, this is only in terms of y and z, not in terms of x. So this is a constant with respect to x, and the derivative of a constant is just 0. What about the partial with respect to y right here? x and sine of z cubed are both constants, so those are going to disappear. The only thing that's left is the partial with respect to y of 2y, which is 2. And then the partial with respect to z of 1 minus z, that's going to be a negative 1. So the divergence of f is 1. 
even though our vector field at the start was super ugly and difficult to work with. Because a lot of this stuff vanished when we did the partial derivatives, our divergence ends up being the constant value of 1. So we know that our surface integral is equal to the integral over the entire volume of 1 times dv. And the integral of 1 is just going to give us the volume of the region. So what is the volume of this hemisphere? Well, we know that it's the sphere of radius 1. And the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi times r cubed. In this case, the radius is 1, so this part's going to go away. This gives us the volume of the sphere. We're looking at half of the sphere, so our answer is going to be a half of 4 thirds pi, which means our answer is 2 thirds pi. And without even doing any integrals at all, by the divergence theorem, we got this surface integral as equal to 2 thirds pi. So that is the divergence theorem. It gives a relationship between the surface integral around the boundary of some volume and the integral of the divergence over that volume. And it comes from the fact that we can always split up a closed surface integral into two parts and we'll still get the same answer. And we can keep dividing it up until we get so small that it just looks like the divergence. That's because the divergence is actually a limit of surface integrals. But because the divergence has a nice formula in terms of partial derivatives, this often simplifies our calculations and lets us get answers that we couldn't reach any other way.